This all started a few years back when I studied in the U.S. at a small liberal arts college in the Midwest. I'd been doing lots of classical music up to that point, and I was always struck by the fact that a lot of the music I was playing was music that was composed many hundred years earlier. It was music close to my heart, and at the same time it felt a bit distant and removed due to the sheer fact that it was written such a long time before. I wanted to branch out, I wanted to do different things, find a different approach to music. So I started playing, uh, paradoxically maybe, even earlier music, Renaissance and Baroque music, and I started playing in some pop bands and uh, did some jazz. And then I came across this mysterious figure of Nicola Matteis. At first I thought, yet another 300-year-old guy. But then I discovered that uh, this guy was in a way a pop star at his time and that certain aspects about his music were in fact an invitation for us to bridge the centuries to our time. Nicola Matteis was born around 1650 in Naples in Italy and uh, when he was 20 he took his violin on his back and headed up north, barefoot through Germany, as the legend goes, all the way to England. He settled in London, was very poor at first, but then started captivating his audience with a totally new kind of music and performance style. I heard that stupendous violin signor Nicolao, whom certainly never mortal man exceeded on that instrument. He had a stroke so sweet and did wonders upon a note. He seemed spiritatoed and played such ravishing things. John Evelyn Diary. And when the raptures came, one would have thought the man beside himself. And then came his superior powers, an arcata as from the clouds, and after that a querulous expostulary style as just not speaking, all which in other signal excellencies might then be perceived, but now may not be described. So violent was his conference of extremes, were of the like I never heard before or since. Roger North. What's very interesting now is that when I looked at the existing printed music of Matthes, I found a mystery. Because that music, a mere sketch, did not in any ways reflect the colorful words in which people describe Matthes' performances. And very strikingly, even some contemporaries of Matthes had been noticing the same thing 300 years earlier. The airs show much of his air and skill, but nothing of his manner of playing, which made them much richer than the Prince show. And now it is impossible either to find out or describe the music he made of them. Roger North. So I thought, now what do we do with this mystery? How do we bring back to life the music of this man now in the 21st century? To just play the written notes was obviously not going to be nearly enough to recreate the power and force that this music and his performances had at the time. We needed a different answer and that's when the Matthäus project started. Together with some friends, I took an unusual approach to this. I would create little drawings that would then enable us to materialize the underlying emotive structure of a piece of music in various musical languages. This sounds pretty complicated, but we'll see later that it's a, quite an easy process. You could also say that we took a piece of music and we translated it from one language to another. So as Nicola Matteis was an Italian Baroque composer, the first thing we did was a process of restoration. And we created a language which we thought might have been the one that they heard and played at the time. A Baroque language played on historical instruments with Italian ornamentation of the time. Thank you. 
And then we thought, why stop there? So with the help of the drawings, we translated the music into a new language, which we call Transbaroque, played on electrically amplified instruments. also thought it might be nice to do a vintage version and created something that people in the late 19th century might have liked. At last, we used electronic means to create a slightly scary version called Wind Noise. So these are the four languages we now work with to create this music, using very old instruments like this Baroque violin here, and uh, very new ones like this five-string electric violin. And recently we started collaborating with an electronic musician, which uh, brings a whole dimension, a new dimension to this project, and is a lot of fun. When I talked before about the Baroque language, I mentioned restoration, because the Baroque language is a restored language. And uh, on a whole, what we do in the Matthäus project is not restoration, but a very different concept of dealing with old art. And the keyword is palimpsest. Palimpsests are old manuscripts where the top layer of the original writing has been scraped off, and a new layer written on top, sometimes many hundred years later, but written on top in such a way that you can still recognize schematically the old writing underneath, or even be able to read the old writing underneath. Now that is fundamentally opposed to the concept of restoration. Because in restoration, be it in art, music, or architecture, um, we have a sort of facelifting where we pretend that time in between just hasn't happened, or we try to eliminate the traces of time in between. And we end up with something that is young, colorful, and bright. There's also an, a third position, um, which looks at decay in, a, in, a, in an aestheticizing way. And you find the beauty of decay. And maybe our vintage version is, is an example of that. So you have on one hand, you have uh, the beauty of restoration, um, a bright beauty of restoration. You have, on the other hand, um, um, a darker beauty of decay. And somewhere in the middle, you find this concept of palimpsest with its simultaneous perception of different layers. So in a way, that's what we do with music. And maybe it brings back to life a 300-year-old pop star. Nicolas Matthes, by the way, um, had a short life in fame and luxury and then gradually lost his artistic abilities and died 
sometime after 1713 a mental and physical wreck and uh, was pretty much forgotten ever since. I for myself feel that encountering this forgotten genius, discovering his mysterious music and bringing it back to life in our own way has brought a lot of new meaning to my own music making, combining the old and the new in a creative way. Mm -hmm.